graphics. We're going to graph some solution trajectories to the previous system of equations. So this is the general solution that we figured out in the previous system. So if you're not sure where this comes from, um, go back and, and rewatch example five. It, that was where we figured out this, uh, general, this general solution. So this is coming straight from example five. We started out with a, uh, a matrix there, and we found its eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And that's how we got this general solution. So what we're doing in this example is we're going to try to graph this. So I'm going to set up some axes here. And remember that you want to start with your eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Here's x1 and x2. Uh, I'm going to give myself some a scale. So you want to start out by graphing your eigenvalues and eigenvectors. First eigenvector I see is 2, 1. So I'm going to graph that right here. Horizontal 2, vertical 1. Horizontal 2, vertical 1 in the other direction. And I'm going to go ahead and set up an axis there. Corresponding to the first solution there. So that's my, uh, my C1, uh, my C1 axis corresponding to that first, uh, that, that, that first solution. I'm um, going to now look at the second eigenvector, which is negative 1, 2. So negative 1 in the horizontal direction, 2 in the vertical direction. There it is right there. There's its negative. So let me set up an axis coming down through there. Now I want to figure out which direction the uh, solutions are traveling along those axes. And the way I do that is by checking the, eigenvec uh, checking the eigenvalues and seeing whether they're positive or negative. So I see on uh, my first one, my C1 solution, I've got a negative eigenvalue. So that means that the solutions are shrinking there. They're getting smaller and smaller. So all along this axis, I'm going to show my solutions uh, gradually drifting into zero. And now my second one, I see the eigenvalue there is negative 10. So that means the solutions are also getting smaller on the second axis. So all of these solutions are drifting into zero. And now I want to think about my mixed solutions where I start mixing these, uh, the C1 solutions and the C2 solutions. And remember, the mixed solutions are always dominated by the larger eigenvalue. So the mixed solutions, I'm going to look for the larger eigenvalue, and my two eigenvalues are negative 5 and negative 10. You want to be really careful here. Negative 5 is larger than negative 10, because it's, it's bigger on the number line than negative 10. So my larger eigen, it's not negative 10, it's negative 5. So that means that that is the dominant solution here. The dominant axis is the one defined by C1. That means all my solutions in between these two blue axes are going to be trying, or will, will try to tend towards the axis defined by C1. So I'm going to draw these solutions in between here. They're all going to go to zero because uh, everything here goes to zero but they're going to go to zero along the axis defined by C1. So all of these things are going to try to follow the axis defined by C1. Even the ones that start near C2 are going to ultimately head over and try to follow the solution defined by C1. And the reason for that is because C1 has the larger eigenvalue. Even though negative 5 and negative 10, they're both negative, so they're both very small. But you still want to find the larger one, and negative 5 is larger than negative 10. Let me kind of emphasize that. We're, show, we're using the fact that negative 5 is larger than negative 10. So negative 5 gets to uh, sort of call the shots on the other solutions. All the other solutions will be attracted 
towards that larger eigenvalue. It essentially means that the e to the negative 10t dies out quickly, and so the e to the negative 5t is the dominant term there. So that's our, our graph of solutions, but let me recap the steps to doing that. First of all, we took the general solution, and we took that back from example 5. So if you're wondering where this line comes from, uh, maybe go back and watch example 5, and you'll see we did all the arithmetic to work out those eigenvalues and eigenvectors. In this problem, we're just graphing them. So we start out with the first eigenvalue, eigenvector, 2, 1. So we graph 2, 1 right there. That's 2 on the horizontal, 1 on the vertical. That's uh, where we got that first black dot there. And then we looked at negative 1, 2, and we graphed that, negative, two, or negative 1 horizontal, 2 vertical. Graphed that point as uh, that second black dot. And then we define, we use those uh, vectors to define our two axes. So that's where we got these two blue lines. And then we had to figure out, are the solutions along those lines expanding or contracting? And the way we figure that out is we look at the eigenvalues. So here we see a negative eigenvalue, which means our solutions are contracting, which is why we have these arrows going into zero all along that line. Here we have also a negative eigenvalue. Again, we have solutions contracting, so they're going into zero all along that line. And then our solutions in between, we figure out that we, they want to follow the dominant eigenvalue, which is the larger of the two numbers, even if they're both negative. So we figured out that negative 5 is bigger than negative 10. So that means all the solutions in between are trying to approach this C1, this dominant axis. It's dominant because it has a larger eigenvalue. And that's why all these red curves you see are approaching, are approaching this dominant axis. They're sort of, they might follow the other axis parallel for a little while, but ultimately they all end up, they all end up uh, getting close to the dominant axis and sort of asymptotically approaching it as they all drift into zero. So that's the end of our lectures on real distinct eigenvalues. This is part of the uh, systems of linear differential equations chapter. We're going to have a couple more lectures, uh, one for complex eigenvalues, we'll get totally different pictures there, and one for real repeated eigenvalues. That's all part of the systems of differential equations chapter, so I hope you'll stick around for that. And this is all part of the differential equations lecture series here on educator.com. My name is Will Murray, and I really want to thank you for watching. Bye-bye.